We are about to start this uh, talk, the last one for the day. Today, this is uh, something that I'm supposed to do on all the failed climate predictions, especially those from the United Nations Intergovern Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, right? IPCC. Please remember this, right? They have been predicting climate science for quite a long time. I would say up to even 50 years at least. And I have to tell you that of all the predictions over the 50 years, there's not a single one of them come true. So I use the word fake science very seriously. It's fake. That's the problem for them. The first thing we're going to start is, first of all, I do want to thank the previous uh, speaker this morning, especially Debbie Bachikalope, who's already introduced to you who Greta Thunberg is. Those who came last year for my talk, I did talk about Greta Thunberg, who doesn't want to bother to go to high school to study science and then yet want to speak all, all these things about science. Right. Especially, I pointed out that the fact that she doesn't even know that if you have a cubic volume, one meter by one meter by one meter, right, volume, we know it's three-dimensional, in a box. If you have about 10 particles, 10 things inside, that is actually almost you cannot even do anything. In fact, it's very difficult to even measure those things. And she had a lot of problem with, with this kind of perception in terms of numbers and, and math and so on and so forth. So, but now she's attacking China, obviously, right? She said that China is very, very bad now because they're emitting too much carbon dioxide. Of course. China said that Greta Thunberg is ignorant political puppet. That's kind of true. And they say, yeah, she really have no scientific credibility. Notice that they always use science for this thing, right? But why would anyone listen to a, a really barely a, a high school kid who doesn't even want to go to school? What credibility does she have on science, actually? I already told you that this whole phenomenon is very troublesome. They constantly search for the weakest possible spokesperson and then abuse, basically, of her own vulnerability and then trying to make use, of course, Greta is not only angry at anybody, in fact, angry at everyone, right? Including all of us. Now it's John Kerry as well, because John Kerry is also not doing much. Okay? John Kerry is trying to say that, well, yeah, you know, half of the future emission cup will come from the future, not now. They know that politically this thing doesn't sell anything. First of all, there's no science in this. It's all their agenda. You have heard enough from Debbie, heard enough from most of the speakers in this meaning that most of these are really strange. They are not real science and they have nothing to do with facts at all. In fact, you have facts, it's very inconvenient. This is why I want to propose to you that uh, Greta should uh, go for this, uh, this kind of transportation. It's a new BMW. kind of movement that is clearly like driven and it's really child abuse as we all know very well but please it's a very serious matter yes. it's a, a bit like me trying to tell you to go and do all this protest without studying science right I really don't encourage anyone to protest until you understand the issues That's right. correct we need to master ourselves to learn what numbers mean like what is cubic meter that's the simple facts people worry about population overpopulation in the world right I think you have seen in some of my previous talk you can feed 7 billion people in just a box of uh, one mile by one mile by one mile. You can feed that inside Manhattan, 7 billion people. We never take out that much space, put it this way. It's always been the perception issue. Yes. The earth is very, very big actually in terms of area that we have. <laughs> Humanity has been here for a long time. Whatever the problem, whatever the issue is, we will be able to resolve them. Yes. In fact, not only through the mean of science and technology. In fact, I, as we all heard very well, that it's all about having God, having moral and ethical principle, yeah. which is really highly lacking. Never mind this kind of a science that is so highly confused. So one aspect of these folks who cry out about they dying of climate change is basically a chart like this, which is a measure of the climate-related death risk for almost a hundred years, right? Look. It's been very, very high in the, in the early part of the 20th century. By now, it's, the risk is extremely low. You will see more statistics like that. But those 
You, does it even make sense to put out things like this when you look at statistics like this, right? It doesn't. So they need more schooling. That's all I'm saying. Go back to school. I think the problem with Greta is that they often take a lot of tests like this, which ask the question, James have 12 crayons and Kim has 7 crayons. How many more crayons does Susan have than Kim? So the, the answer is obvious. Who is Susan? I'm so confused. I already told you that people want to get me fired for a long time. By the way, for this talk, I really have to say, you notice I didn't put my affiliation because this one, they don't want me to talk about climate. So I've, I've been officially not allowed to do this climate at my official institution. So I'm doing it at my own free time. Uh -huh. So they want to fire. This is the actual protest in Washington, D.C. Y'all that come and saw my first talk in the, in the camp, which is 2017, I mean, you will see, you can look up internet, you will find that uh, Reverend L. Shapton is really don't like me as much though. <laughs> So there are real protests, but you know, maybe they are right, because you know why, right? I have a, this is actually my residential place. This is where I live. I mean, you all don't think that I dress like this, you know, I gotta have something serious. Do you want to look at my room? I, my, my, here, here's my guest room. My guest room is, it's a pretty impressive portfolio of good people. And you have seen my toilet. Oh, wait yet, wait yet. You know, like, I keep updating, updating. So for, for 2021, a little upgrade. So my upgrade is basically... It's, it's not too much money. It's $60,000 for the... For, I'm okay with that. You can ask them. It's a, bit, it's a bit hard to, you know, very hard to wipe. But joking aside, these folks are proposing reusable toilet paper. Dude, you gonna watch this? I'm not joking. I mean, it's, it's a bit sick, you know. These people, something wrong with them. They dare to even sell things like this. This is what Joe Biden called a new industry, right? New job. You're gonna provide more job for those guys. And then in Korea, they started to give you, a, if you go poop, and then they can give them the poop, then they can use for fertilizer, but you get coffee and books out of it. So, these people are very serious. They, yeah, they are. Yeah. They're in some kind of mental, yeah. strange mental state that unfortunately only I think religion and common sense will cure them. Okay. And common sense, it doesn't come easily for these people. Some of them may need a little bit of shaking. But I don't want to do that. But no, I'm not proposing violence. But, but remember, this is a very heavy movement. They sent out the best and the brightest of theirs. This is one of them, Richard Glover. He actually said that it's so bad that he wants to tattoo this denial on my head. Right? I want to tattoo him, uh, this brick tattoo on his own head. These people are really, really smart. Uh -huh. You all heard about the book for the Rule for the Radicals, right? Yeah. Saul Alinsky. Yeah. It is quite interesting for the younger folks to actually look into this too. Yeah. They are very clever. Yeah. They are all reading from the same rule books. Yeah. The only problem is that it's not that we are not willing to unite. The problem is that we follow the principle of God, truth and nothing but the truth. That's right. There is a slight Asymmetry, not disadvantages, but slight asymmetry, where they're willing to lie because they, are, they come from Satan. They, yeah. they believe in all this crazy stuff that we couldn't even catch up in terms of debunking, but they constantly manipulate. This is what I say. Stay true to the path. Stay true. Science is very, very beautiful. Don't let them abuse these things. There's a lot of things to learn in this world yes. that we can do good about. This is a statistic that is a bit hard to read, but the whole point is that over the last century or so, so the actual issues about extreme poverty for all over the globe, Sub-Saharan Africa, Western Europe, we've been constantly improving. All this self-hatred, this crazy stuff on, on racial nonsense, it's a bit sad because, you know, it's, it's not only highly exaggerated, it's just completely non, even not related. The world is only increasingly better in that sense. Yeah. We are able to better care for our environment, caring for our, our next uh, fellow human beings, so on and so forth. We can do so much of it. And that's because of science and technology, really. Even though now there is a form of abuse of science and technology by using this sort of stuff to control you. The word is technocracy, right? Yeah. So it's a bit dangerous, but then 
if we keep vigilance and use the technology in the right way, I'm quite sure we'll overcome any of these small little issues. Yes, uh, how assign me to do this prediction? Don't read this thing because you're going to squeeze your eye. You know how many predictions those guys have made, right, for the last 50 years? Every single one of them. By guys like Al Gore, like, I don't know, so many names here. James Hansen, which is father of global warming. Tony Blair, David King, Tim Ferry, all these names that is just... All these speakers that is making no sense. All of them has been failing for so far. So I'll provide you some evidence. And then I will also try to explain why this carbon dioxide is not such a bad gas. In fact, it's a gas of life and these people turn it into a satanic gas, which is very, very bad thing to do. Because it's not even close to reality. So here's one of the predictions. They say those things. Entire nation would wipe off the face of the earth by rising sea level if global warming trend is not reversed by year 2000. That was made in 1989. This is no wonder once I heard a, a comedian who says this. If the sea is going to rise by let's say 4 to even 8 inches per century and you yourself don't know how to move back a little bit, then you deserve to die. <laughs> it is a very tiny thing. This is the issue about numbers. Remember besides, I think about what I say. 4 inches to 8 inches over 100 years. That's basically what the rate of the sea level change is now that we can measure as best as we know how. This is not a big number, it's a small, small amount of number. And they try to confuse people, obviously. And then another fellow from uh, Michigan, this guy is very, very smart, he's an engineer, and he has a lot of deep insight on, on IPCC and the use of climate model. Remember, all this forecast is not based on any data, it's all based on climate model. And I'll explain to you what climate model is, of course. They are trying to confuse prediction of weather, meteorology, like you can open up your iPhone and check the weather for the next few days to predict climate over next year, next 100 years, that 50 years, and those sorts. Those are very different class of problem. The climate model simply cannot do that. So one of the aspects is, like I say, it's all based on model. Model just means that you have a lot of opportunity to adjust numbers. Cheating, basically, right? Yes. To put it more, <laughs> more, more clearly. So in, if you count the word count of measurements, which is data, science is all about experimental data, right? What measurements you can do. It's a very small amount of mention. Whereas you can see the disproportionate amount of uh, mention is all on models. Models. It's not the model that walk on the highway, right? So just kidding. <laughs> <coughs> and then Chris Ransage found that actually in a lot of this IPCC report, if you look at the climate model, you can count them. You run out of fingers, right? Because he counted there's at least 1,800 or 1,700 of adjustable parameters. Do you understand what I mean? You have a, a set of models that you can adjust things up and down, high and low and all that stuff. This is not science, okay? This is actually called voodoo science. It's, you don't need to be trained, fully trained in science to understand that this is actually a bit of a bluff. Right? The reason why I pull Chris Ransett is that because a lot of people, they, the people that do the work, that use our taxpayer money, never tell you this number. They've been hiding for a long time. This is part of the technocracy movement, put it this way. They're trying to say, I am so and so. It's always about prestigious. But science prestigious doesn't mean anything. Only one fact is enough. I mean, you all heard about Albert Einstein's general relativity equation to describe space, time, and gravity, right? Yeah. When he produced this theory early on in the 20th century, there's a group of academicians, 100 of them, from Berlin Academy of Science or something, who says that, wow, they have proven that Einstein's stuff is wrong, but actually, they talk all day long, there's no evidence to say that Einstein is right or wrong. That's why Einstein say, why would you need 100? If I were to be wrong, one would suffice. That's exactly the kind of problem we're dealing with. So the question is, can the climate model simulate something as simple as the seasonal temperature cycle? Okay, so I will show some graph. Please, don't be upset about graph. Graph is good for you. The more numbers you know, the more facts you empower yourself, the better you are able to speak about this issue because it's always about the numbers. They hide it. They make sure you don't know what four inches per century mean. Okay, they use all these big numbers, changing, hide everything. So climate model, here's what it is. If you ask yourself, how well does the 72 simulation, this is basically a, a, quite a few models, 
to calculate the seasonal cycle in Northern Hemisphere, right? And the data, are all, the, the com computer climate models are all over the place, okay? And let's ask ourselves, where is the observation? <coughs> it's right there. I mean, I can ask uh, Emily, actually my youngest da daughter, to close her eye and throw this dutch, you know, you throw, you just land anything. This is the kind of problem. It's, there's no bullseye here. These people are really good at cheating. And then when they talk about all this model, in fact, it's the same kind of model, and then they use another weapon. One of the famous weapons is actually to use Nobel Prize. Oh, I got Nobel Prize, guys. You got to listen to me because I'm an expert. Uh-uh, this guy is just a Nobel Prize in chemistry. He found something very beautiful called the C60 buckyball. It's basically carbon. Six, 60 of them make it like a soccer ball. It's a beautiful thing. But he has no understanding of climate system. Okay? Yeah. But he will put out this kind of statement. The sobering conclusion about future warming. You notice that it's always about future warming. It's never about checking what the data say now. You already see that they failed this climate prediction for a very long time. I have more details later. But he said that, oh, you, but we are not talking about one scientist model, but a number of programs give similar results. Be patient. This is something to learn here. It shows you that even a Nobel Prize person is talking absolute nonsense. Okay, Professor Ko, I apologize. In fact, I did that in Rice University where he is at. I also show the same graph, although I remove his name, <laughs> just to be polite, you know. And so, the idea about taking an average of four stuff for a floor climate model and expect something correct, is really ridiculous. Yesterday, you saw my analogy on football and guy, right? Today, we talk about airplanes. Just imagine what is an average passenger jet look like if you take a bunch of these passenger jets. You can average them. You digitize the image point by point, you just collate them, and you get something very, very fuzzy. <laughs> I mean, I don't know who should go on this airplane. I would propose Al Gore, I propose Tony Blair, a bunch of this guy, you know? Virgin Atlantic guy, who's the guy who just flew up in space and Jabbies or whatever. <laughs> So the, the short answer about climate model is this. You give me a faster computer, I'll give you the wrong result sooner. <laughs> it's a very serious statement. I'm confident to say that. By the way, I will say this even in a scientific meeting because I'm so fed up with them. Right? Let them come and tell me what's wrong with this statement. Really, the serious thing for, for science is this. They have been abusing climate model for a very, very long time. The problem about climate model is this. With the current state of understanding, I would even say that for the next 50 years, if, if science advances. Now, by the way, the problem now is that the science is not advancing at all. It's not only adv not advancing, actually it's moving backward. These people are walking backward and all that every single day. Okay? You can only, if they get the right result, you should very, very worry because you know 100% they will get it for the wrong reason. Mm -hmm. That's the reason. Think about this statement. You get the right result for the wrong reason. What good is that? Yeah. Okay, and then one more thing is indeed giggle. People say it's garbage in, garbage out. I told you I would not worry if it's garbage in, garbage out. It is garbage in that gospel out that is very, very dangerous. Okay, so every time you hear giggle, please correct those people who say garbage in, garbage out. It's gospel that is very worrisome. Here's now the big, big guy from the United uh, Nations, uh, United Nations, UN, Antonio Guterres. He's one of the big. Super duper guy from, uh, I know where he studied, University of Portugal, in, uh, he's a Portuguese. He said now we don't even have one minute. One minute, it's over, okay. The world is going to collapse. See, the prediction getting worse and worse. Once they got it wrong, they would just say all kinds of nonsense things. We don't have a day, we don't have a month, we don't have a year to lose. We don't have even one minute to lose. <laughs> right, Reverend? <laughs> Should we start crying now? Should we start crying? I want to thank Reverend for really warm up everybody and make sure that they are able to listen to this message, isn't it? <laughs> I forgot to show you that the, just now the summary is basically the scorecard is 48 versus 0. It's kind of very impressive. I mean, if you play soccer with this score, I mean, you'll be really, really kicked out of everything. Everybody will laugh out of you. <clears throat> we'll keep going. I will not use a S word, I will just say the sheer sweetiness of their signs. <laughs> These are the people who propose and, uh, and attack us. Attack us uh, basically who, for disagreeing with them. So for example, I know who this guy is. We've been trying to have a debate with him for a very long time. 
the podium is always open for them to have 30 minutes or one hour, I have one hour. And I have, not only me, there are plenty of my colleagues to sit around here to just debate them science openly. We, you do it anywhere you want, in the jungle, in the TV, for whatever, doesn't matter. They never come. Yeah. They never come. Right. We try. We try. And then they say, oh, this will is soon. He has no peer review paper. Please look up my publication. Yeah. He thinks that he write paper? Oh yeah, sure. He maybe have a lot more paper than me. Like I told you, it doesn't matter. Right. I have already a hundred paper. But my hundred paper, each one of them, is a struggle of a soul. I told you yesterday, I spent 31 years to write two papers. <laughs> That's kind of slow. <laughs> But I wrote so many other things in the meantime, obviously, because I only write things that is correct. All the stuff that they do, you can prove them to be wrong in one minute. I really, that's easy. Really easy. That's why I encourage you not to be afraid. Study them, ask them questions, show me the data. Most of the time, they show you data that is manipulated. That's why you be, need to be knowledgeable about the nature of the data itself. Sometimes they use model to confuse you. So once they got this problem, they are very, very sweet. So they don't use the S word a lot, but they always call us S word. And uh, you look at that. Now they say, look, there are even more deadly predictions after all the predictions are wrong. Now they say the globe, if the temperature globe one by two degrees, you have global crop failure. If you two degree by 2035, four, four degree 2065, it's always about future. And then the earth cannot be inhabited by six degrees. That's an absolute baloney. We already have crocodile growing in uh, Elsmer Island in Canada, okay? <laughs> we have those kind of conditions. Nothing die, okay? Appreciate that. Talking nonsense. Here's one of the problem, like I say, we're not talking, we're talking about very serious uh, dirty laundry that they have. Yeah. This is the latest of the latest. By the way, the next report is coming out, end of this year. The IPCC report, the sixth report. They are producing six report over since 1988. 1990 and 1988. Look at that. It's actually all 534 calculations for this one index, which is about the sea surface temperature, okay? The warmest part. All of them are wrong compared to the observation, which is that tiny thing over there. It just tells you that it's a very serious problem. These people. And, and I'm telling you, with the way they are going, it's absolutely no way of fixing this thing. They never increase knowledge, it's always decreasing the knowledge. And here's about the uh, issues about prediction involving ice. Because glo global warming, you're supposed to melt all the ice away, correct? Less snow and less uh, glacier, whatever, right? Sea ice, less, less of all of this. Are, are we agreeing on that point? But no. A lot of them say that even when you have more snow, it is a global warming effect. <laughs> but they don't know how to explain why. You know that Al Gore constantly, every time he shows in some meeting, always be some snow. From the north to the south. One time in Australia, one of the year, he went over there. It's winter over there. It's snowing, obviously. What are you going to do about it? So, all this issue is always about Arctic, no more ice. My kid doesn't know what skiing is. You know, that kind of stuff. So, Speaking of paper, this is one of the paper that I produced, right? With some of my colleagues from Ireland. The top here is about observation from winter, spring, summer, and fall, four season. This is what the climate model is doing. Again, every single one of them, I'm not embarrassed. And oh, you know what? We all know this result 30, 40 years ago. I just slowly showing them, you know, again, like I say, I have many things to do. This is less important for me. But my point is not to show that they are wrong, to show that this is completely meaningless. And one ought to learn how to fix it. Oh, they don't want to fix it. They just say, oh, this is another one of those being, like you say, uh, they say that I'm being funded by fossil fuel company. That's all they do. Sorry, I, I just pushing the limit. Look at that. You get bored by even looking at this kind of graph because every single time you look, all their model fail. And now I'm talking about the latest model. So don't let them fool you to say that, oh, IPCC have a new report, they already found everything to be right. And now let's talk about Glacier, National Glacier Park. Look, in 2009, no more glaciers in Glacier National Park by 2020. What year is this now? 2021. Wow, you're wrong, man. Just kidding. <laughs> the glacier is still there, obviously. Maybe we should look at the satellite picture, right? The one over here. It's there. 
It's a bit boring, you know, this kind of game. But someone ought to remind them. That's the problem. They are so good at doing all this. And all this media, obviously, they're all lying. They're all working together. As long as they all got paycheck, and that's all that matters to them. Yeah. And these are the people that really need to go to church more. <laughs> but not any other church. Reverend Stevie's church, I would recommend. <laughs> Where they will hear the proper sermon and the meaning of the gospel. <clears throat> wow, here's another one, right? They predict there's no more Glacier National Park by 1948. That's another one. You can go way back. Things are not so confusing. Here's one. No more glaciers by 1961. We still have it. I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and then we all know that last winter, last winter, last winter, this is what people that call us sweet, right? The last winter, look at what they predict. This is three-month prediction. We're not talking about you know, like several decades, they pretty much three months ahead. And this is what they say, Texas is going to be warm. You all know what happened, right, last year. <laughs> last year, this is what happened. Huge amount of cold air funneling down. Okay, I suspect it's related to sunspot activity, obviously. It's weakening, so the flow won't be more zonal, so it'll be more meridional. You understand, more north-south position, where the cold air, half of them will be able to flow down more easily. Okay. And this is another easier way to, to look at this. What happened in February of uh, uh, 2020 or something. <coughs> and one of the popular things they do is about promoting this thing is because carbon dioxide is bad. What they like is always about solar, wind, all this kind of energy. They are of no use. I should give another talk to explain why they are of no use, of course. It's actually related to a thing called power density. They are too dilute. The best way God already created this whole system about capturing solar energy is the plants. Yes. Biological system is far more efficient in capturing solar energy, really. And now they're trying to invent solar panel that reach what they call quantum efficiency of converting the sunlight into electricity almost 90% up to that high. You cannot gain any more out of it, no matter what the technology can do. So physics has a limit, and these people keep forgetting and then keep lying about it. And one of the features is, of course, during snow, <laughs> snow day, I don't know you, how many solar energy you're going to collect. In fact, you're going to damage your solar panel, right? And then what about all the toxic stuff that you're going to get rid of, you know? That's why I'm not worried about all this Tesla car, all this battery. The worst thing is that when they're not working anymore, where are you going to keep the battery? I think we should put it in Al Gore's house. <laughs> so they have been failing for a very long time, by the way. All of them, every single one of them, but you already notice, right? The whole thing is that once you fail, you add one more year. This one add four, five more years. This one, Greta, add seven years, whatever. They keep having. 20, 30, every single one of them simply not convincing, put it this way. Yes, I mean, this guy, this is actually father of global warming, so I kind of want to point him out. His name is James Hansen. He's not a very good man. And then, of course, the most famous of all the climate predictions come from our friend here, Dimensia Zhou. <laughs> what? <laughs> you can't hear him, right? But he's trying to say something. You're gonna get a check. <laughs> sure, yeah. This guy is out of his mind, I'm telling you. He won't last. If I may make one, one uh, forecast, one forecast that I'm sure is that he will be out of office, I think, morally by the end of this year. And then just imagine what will happen. He is out of his mind. I, I do want to thank Debbie for showing this, this thing in this morning about the world leader of Climate Summit. But one thing that uh, Debbie forgot to tell you is that there were only 261 people watching and this guy, 51 people watching and one of them is me, one of them is Debbie or something <laughs> and he got only 249 people and he said he got 80 million votes that's a very hard mathematics <laughs> oh this guy is so nice that he saved us 16 cents for your hot dog, right? <laughs> they are so clueless that they dare to put up crap like this, you know? Really absolute crap, so that's why I think they all should use the reusable toilet, toilet cloth. <laughs> so they'll get their hand a bit more dirty. 
And then you all know this one, right? The latest one is very, very painful to watch. This is July 13. I mean, not that long ago, less than a week ago. They actually physically invite this, whoever this uh, crazy guy that is in charge of the, <laughs> our, our Tony, Tony something, whatever, Tony Blinken or something. He is actually invited, invited the United Nations to come in and check us for racism. <laughs> this is very serious. These people are really out of their mind. I mean, not only that, they invite the United Nations to come in. Well, you all know enough. We all know enough. And of all the sane people that I know, the one that I respected the most is Professor Richard Lindzen from MIT. He's already retired, I'm Professor Emeritus. He say a lot of things, obviously, but one of these quotes that I put in red, that I like it very much. Our task is to show people the overall stupidity of the issue rather than punching away at details. So I apologize for giving you numbers. If public relations advisor can solve this problem, they would be well worth hiring, but I have my doubt. This is the problem. The only thing now we can do, I think, is grassroots. Mm, yeah. <laughs> grassroots. Okay. These people are also certifiably insane. <laughs> I mean, that's something very sad to hear from a, a distinguished uh, scientist like this, which is the youngest man ever elected to our National Academy of Science. So, let's go back. The origin of the cause of this claim of global warming is by a guy named Jim Hansen. I show you, he was near the, you know, he was a really strange guy. In 1988, he was proposing, he was already 99% confident that the warming was caused by CO2. Okay, so he showed a graph like this, which is really puzzling. I don't know how you reach a conclusion like that, but you remember, it's all based on climate model, okay? And then, if you look at the update, wow, the growth should be, by the way, the bottom line about graph like this is that, indeed, there's a lot of technical details. I've been working for 10 years, but we finally have about two papers that come out that we're gonna show that this part here is not real warming. It's related to urban city, or the thermometer stations, all that problem. These are the people that get paid, their full-time job is this. I'm not allowed to do this research, remember this. Just remember me, how, how, tragedy and how outrageous this nonsense is. So what they do is often that they do things like that, they do the CO2 rising curve, so they plot you a correlation. So CO2 increases temperature warmer. Remember here, later I'll teach you a trick. This is anomaly, this is not real temperature, they are tricking you, okay? This is very nice. Don't you think it's convincing? If you have more carbon dioxide, temperature go up. Problem solved. Cut all the program, no more funding. Oh, those guys will say, no, 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 we don't understand this. We don't understand that. They will start saying that. You just tell them to worry. But I want to propose one thing very clear. If you believe that this is correct, I want to propose you to do this. Eat more chocolate. <laughs> because the more chocolate you eat, the higher chances you will get a Nobel Prize. I don't know in what, physics, chemistry. <laughs> I mean, that's a correlation. Switzerland have the highest chocolate eating, so they have more chance to get a Nobel Prize. Sweden is not far up there. Sweden is also doing pretty well. United States, we don't like chocolate that much, I guess. China, they absolutely don't like chocolate. China is down here. But the trick is, right, remember I told you they plot this thing called temperature anomaly? Under a normal definition, that is okay. Which means you just take something, subtract a long-term mean from certain years, and then you subtract the difference. But they are hiding that information. The hiding information can be looked like this. The actual graph, this is for the United States. Every year we have these temperature changes, okay? Let me click my thing. We have average changes of 45 degree Fahrenheit. And they are asking you to look for zero, one degree. You know, very tiny amount. This is the kind of lie they're doing. They never plot you this graph because they say, you're too stupid to know. You shouldn't be looking at this. You don't even know every day. We sit in the north, we know there's a seasonal temperature. That's why they show you this red curve. And then they change the scale of the graph. Notice this is 45 and they were showing changes that almost no more than two degrees, okay? They amplify the graph. So you always want to show data, never run away from it. They say global, and they use word. They never want to make graph, oh, too complicated. People don't understand. Come on, you know, you can understand these things. They just don't want you to see it or know it. Okay, that's a, that's a fundamental problem. It's not communication, it's not anything. It's about lying. This is the problem that bothers me so much. What's wrong with these people? 
right? And now if you want to know the latest, the last 20 years, this is the latest result. So again, if you plot the season, please somebody tell me that you find global warming in America. So what are we doing? It's Biden saying that he have a little bit of headache, right? Then he asks you to chop off his arm, chop off his leg, chop off everything. And then you say, oh, I'm sorry, you just have a little fever. Maybe you should just take a Tylenol. <laughs> bad people. These are really bad people. So to understand climate, we need to understand how CO2 in the context of energy flow, right? Things is moving up and down and so on and so forth. CO2 indeed can make a greenhouse effect, but it's a bad word, okay? Greenhouse effect is not correct physically in some sense, but it's essentially telling you that more greenhouse effect, you will warm the planet. But we don't know how much. After 50 years or 100 years of learning, we don't know exact number. Science is all about number. If it's one degree, it means nothing like this. Oh, that's three degrees. Hot. <laughs> really, you got to remember the number. If it's 10 degrees, oh yeah, then I'll worry. If you like this, okay, I can take it. If you punch me, of course, I'm going <laughs> to... But they forgot the most important greenhouse gas in the planet, in the whole world. It could never be CO2. It's always water vapor. And then even in the picture, they want to lie to you. When you see a smoke, they even color the thing a little bit. They do manipulate image. Be careful. They try to make it a little darker so it looks like it's more dirty. I feel dirty now, you know? <laughs> Natural CO2, evil man makes CO2. But the whole thing is that the whole climate system is really, we are a water planet. The whole system is controlled by water. At the top here, I'm showing you the distribution of the temperature. The bottom is water vapor. We are showing here from 90 north to 90 south. So North Pole to South Pole, equator is right here. And then vertically from 0 to 20 kilometers. Okay, so maybe 10, 10, 15 miles or so up in the air. It shows you how close at one instant of the time these things are related. So most of the system, the Earth system, we've known for a long time. This is why it's not surprising when you plot the amount of uh, water vapor content. By the way, this kind of result is never formally even published. I just make them just to show you the simple, to teach people. You're supposed to teach this to students every day, every day, but they don't do that. This is always teach you about CO2. Of course, someday when I fully understand the graph, I will publish the paper. It's not important to me. But those guys never show you this. Do you understand? The system is controlled by water vapor. And they won't tell you. And the water vapor in turn is related to the sun radiation heating the, the ocean surface to evaporate, right? But then they always want to show you, it's a carbon dioxide grow, walk, going up, keep going up. And then the, the, the secret is this, parts per million, yeah. right? Yeah. Even 400 parts per million is just mean what? I always ask people, do you know how many percent, percentage? And they ask actually the EPA's administrator, Gina McCarthy. She doesn't know how to answer. It's actually only 0.04%. Okay, it's not 1%, 0.04%. In terms of the concentration, this is no wonder why they like a graph like this. You should show them a graph like this. <laughs> Debbie, we've been to quite a few of those. Madrid, we heard Paris, we heard all of this meeting. They keep having more and more meeting and then the carbon dioxide keep going up. It's all because of them probably. They have all kinds of climate agreement. It's a political movement that is quite vicious. Self-fulfilling and then they are lying to everybody including themselves because they have big time agenda, right? But, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, I'm a natural scientist. What do you mean I'm studying natural world? So, already papers, people write papers about this, right? If you look at the greenhouse effect, hiatus means that the greenhouse effect stop working properly, stop, stop keep increasing. It's, if you want to think about that, you just look at the graph from 80 to about now, right? You keep going, the, the thing is just flat, which means all of a sudden, remember what I show you, the carbon dioxide graph keep going up. But yet, you go over here, all of a sudden, 1992 or 3, it started to go flat. Why? The explanation is very simple. It tells you that the climate system is not controlled by carbon dioxide at all. The only reasonable conclusion, yes, it's not controlled by carbon dioxide, but it's controlled by water vapor and cloud, which is one of the hard problems in, in meteorological and climate sciences. And then not to scare you, that if you want to study climate, 
That's why people are always I'm waving. I know so much. I'm a climate scientist. This is an area that is very difficult. You want to study climate? Look at what you need to know. You need to know astronomy, solar physics, geology, geochronology, geochemistry, sedimentology, tectonic, paleontology, paleoecology, glaciology, climatology, meteorology, oceanography, ecology, archaeology, and history. It's a very significant investment of, of, of energy and, and dedication. And no single human being in this world studies this sort of stuff all in one shot. So again, I remind you that my good friend, Professor Richard Lindzen say, what historian will definitely wonder about in the future century is how deeply flawed logic, obscured by shrewd and unrelenting propaganda, actually enable a coalition of powerful special interests to convince nearly everyone in the world that CO2 from human industry was a dangerous planet-destroying toxin. It will be remembered as the greatest mass delusion in the history of the world that CO2, the life of plants, was considered for a time a deadly poison. This is a very, very good quote. <clears throat> this is after about 40 years of struggling in this battle. I think he's not quite give up, but he just retired. <laughs> I just told Dick we'll never de retire. So the idea then. Why don't we just cut CO2, reduce CO2 emission, just in case? This is the notion, I set it up because I have the opportunity to ask Al Gore this same question. Because we know that CO2 is plant food. So if you cut down this CO2, let's say that you don't cool the climate. By the way, you will never cool the climate by cutting down CO2. But let's say that even if we don't talk about that, but we know that it's going to benefit the plant kingdom, biological kingdom then don't you think that the plants and animals are all going to suffer, but who are going to be responsible for this? El Gore won't answer the question. He knows that he cannot answer the question. He's a very dishonest and flawed man, put it this way. Right? So, it's a very difficult question. They, they're really good at lying. So, we have friends. My friends in uh, CO2coalition.org is another one of those good uh, places to go for information. You know, and we try to do the best we can. So they just recently put up this uh, advertisement at uh, Turnpike in uh, Pennsylvania. But the whole idea is that even in the current concentration of uh, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, outside is actually about 410 or so parts per million. Again, 0.04%, okay? But we are in a CO2 starvation state according to geological history and geological understanding of what carbon dioxide is about. You look, right now, even 461 is considered starvation when you compare to much higher concentration of that, of carbon dioxide. And remember what science is. Science is about experiment. This means that you can do this. Why do you think people produce a tomato in a greenhouse and all this during winter, right? It's a huge billion dollars industry. And we just don't have enough CO2. That's the problem in this world. It's not the way that they're saying it. <coughs> so you look at this kind of thing, this are factual stuff. And yet, you know what? They can erase this from the history, these people. We are indeed geological history. This is one of the estimates for about 400 million years. And we are right here now. So you tell me that we are actually in an optimal CO2 condition. But one way in which they're trying to scare you is obviously that they think that CO2 is bad, so they show you things like this. Climate change, you're going to get more poison ivy and you get more itchy. I'm going to start scratching. <laughs> right? It's a liar, these people. They're so bad. So they keep saying, oh, now more carbon dioxide. You're happy now? You're happy now? More carbon dioxide, more poison ivy. So you're all going to itch. <laughs> This is the kind of purposeful nonsense, actually. I'm very sad. And you know what? You pay for it. Okay? We pay for it because it comes from paper like this. Oh, they have papers. Believe me, this is the kind of paper that they say they have few hundreds of. This is the one that actually I'm willing to wipe with my, you know? <laughs> Instead of the unhygienic thing, I'm going to use the paper and wipe it. You see, it's paid by NSF, which is National Science Foundation. NASA, you all know NASA is, right? NOAA, which is National Oceanic, this is the Department of Commerce. They are able to squeeze so much money. Why would NASA and NOAA pay these people to do this thing? 
to do experiment, they say. I'm doing experiment in the lab. By the way, these folks are all from Harvard University. I'm disgusted by those people. And then, of course, the latest one is that you have a ethically sourced uh, cocaine. They are promoting things like that. Very daring, but three times the price of a regular street. <laughs> Very smart economists. But they forgot. I want to teach you. God Almighty knows everything. Really? Right. It is. It's a salad bar for those animals. Poison ivy. It just so happened that one of the chemical makers itch. Yeah? But I'm sorry, you know, if you want to think even in the bigger picture, right? These little things that make us itch, it actually doesn't make all these other species. The reptiles and the birds and all these other people eat those things. You know? There are still benefit to those animals, and then perhaps we can eat the animals, of course. <laughs> I mean, that's the nature of a cycle of things, right? Humbly, of course, we eat, we eat with some humble realization that this is what life is. And that's why they don't want to talk about this. CO2, I like to talk about this. Look at all my vegetable and tomato and things like that growing bigger and bigger, right? This is the fact that they irritate them a lot that now they're beginning to try to change the story. The story is that the CO2 that has been rising over the last 50 years or so is make the planet greener. There are places that is not greener, but very small minority of them. Okay? That's the whole truth. And then they particularly benefit China and India. Look, more green over here, which means there are actually more enhancement from the carbon dioxide in the air. And it's really good in the sense that it's able to support more population. I don't think they like that though. <coughs> yeah, China and India, if you focus in, it's a lot more green area. Even in China, you can tell pictures. Right? India, major agricultural input. This is all some of the latest thing that obviously they're all trying to hide and make sure you don't know about it. So shh, please don't tell. Please go home and keep it secret, please. <laughs> hide all this in the room. You can print this out and read it inside the closet. <laughs> but these are the facts. These are the facts. The collection of the grain yield here, I think, is uh, corn. Yeah, corn grain yield, the historically from you know 19th century until now. It's all the opposite. I'm almost there. But one of the benefits of carbon dioxide is not only making things green, because it has also enhanced the efficiency of how the plants are using water and is losing less water. Because when it's more enriched, there are all these things behind the leaf. If you look under the microscope, they have the thing called stomata. They tended to be closed and smaller, so you lose less water. Okay. This is a fact, another documented fact that you can find in a lot of this data. So, you know, at least some of the money used by NASA is appropriately used to, to monitor things like this. So we have more CO2 uptake, and then we have more water use efficiency, which is the green dot and the red dot, right? And then here's another evidence. If you look at all the data plotting up to today, very up to date, the planet F do get greener, and they just don't like it. This is the greenhouse stuff. And then no wonder this, uh, this uh, Congress, this, this senator is asking uh, this new EPA guy. This guy is really a political tool. <laughs> He's a very disgusting guy, by the way. <laughs> they want to spend $2 trillion, this Green New Deal. Yeah? You all heard about Green New Deal? Anybody heard about Green New Deal? Yeah, yeah, AOC and a bunch of those are really, really, the, the high school reject, the average D student, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> The average D student is taking revenge on all of us. So sad. <laughs> but just when they think no one is looking at the data anymore, they started to say the planet is burning. I've been spending about two years now studying the wildfire story. We already studied a lot. We have about five papers now. So far, every paper, they want to reject it. But believe me, we'll get it published. It's just all childish stuff. You know what I mean? They don't do it. This day, you don't have peer review system. I'm not afraid of people checking. If I find something wrong, oh, I say I'm wrong, so I won't publish. But so far, every of the comment, it was all political in nature. Very sad. Not technical of any kind, because they cannot talk technical. I'm not afraid of these people. By the way, that's what they do. You want data? You look at data. This is all the annual burn area of all in Australia, because they're trying to talk about Australia being bad, right? 
California, same kind of story you can find. Over whole globe, you can look for yourself. Are, are we lying to yourself? Unless the data is wrong. By the way, the data is pretty good quality here. Okay, that's all I can tell you. You cannot just look at data, delivery, select the data you like. No such thing. I have no interest in those kind of things. Just to make me feel good, oh, I look good here for a few minutes. The next minute you found you're going to, Reverend Crow going to take this thing and hit on my head if I do anything lie like this. No, it's not true. You cannot do that. But so many scientists willing to do that. That's the problem. I don't know why, but they do that. And then one more thing that they do that bothers me the most. This is about U.S. forest fire. Okay? From 1900 to about, even now, you can put the number now. You know what happened, right? Lately, just beginning after the Biden administration get in, you know what happened? They block all the data. They say all those data are not valid anymore. You should only look here. Yeah. No, if you look carefully, actually, if you make the graph big, it looks like it's going up. That's what they're telling you. And then they're not showing you the rest of it. You know why? They say, oh, the data here are no good. But I want to remind you one very simple fact. This one, you don't have to be a scientist. When you count numbers, the small numbers are very difficult and not accurate. The one that can burn something like a 90 million acres, you know, you won't miss it because it's there. That's the problem. No matter how much error, maybe it's wrong, it's wrong by this much. But you cannot erase this compared to that, isn't it? I'm sorry, it's all logic. It's all logic and these people are very, very bad people. I'm not afraid of them because I dig very deep into the data, understanding how it works, ecology, what do you need? But the bottom line is even more simple about wildfire management. It's an advice from one of my friends, Willie Sachenbach. This guy never has, he has a college degree, but he kind of uh, don't want to get too many degrees because it's embarrassing. So, but he's extremely smart. Data-oriented person, know how to do computer, you know what I mean. He said very simple advice on wildfire. If you have cold weather, you have a lot of fuel between biomass, like the environmentalists are the, by the way, environmentalists are the one to blame for this all problem, okay? You have fuel and then you have arsenic, you will get fire. If you have hot fire, you have no fuel and then you have arsenic, no fuel. Which means you, you can clear cut, you do all the clearing, they don't allow. In fact, they're trying to put you in jail if you do that, right? But you can do something about fuel and arsenic, but you cannot do anything about weather. You cut CO2, definitely the, the, the wildfire activity will still change. Will still keep going, do whatever it does naturally. So one takeaway message is very simple. I'm always done. Scientists say that the universe is made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. But they forgot to mention morons. <laughs> So CO2, my conclusion after 30 years of studying is that it's not a major player in the climate system. It could never be, it could never be, no matter how much Al Gore says, okay? So it's an illusion. So tomorrow I'm going to go join this movement. I'm going to reunite Pangea. You all know about Pangea? Pangea is basically take, plate tectonics, all these things are moving. Okay, I'm good now. Thank you.